Hello, you beautiful lot. Welcome to today's episode of Purple Vision. Now, I find myself on the edge of Ketrin, a little village called Rothwell, which has actually been named after a red well, so an iron-rich water well around here somewhere. Anyway, that's besides the point. I am at the Holy Trinity Church because about a year ago I actually saw a newspaper report by North, North Ants Live um, saying that there was an amazing crypt down here and it's filled with skulls and it looks absolutely amazing. So I tried to do a little bit of research and I also asked the lady at Wellingborough Museum, Judith Thompson, um, what it may be and she thought it may have been for the plague but it's it's not. It actually looks like more of a decorative, uh, decorative piece for people to actually come and visit the church. Because if you look, it just looks like your normal bog standard church. But I am, at the moment, just waiting for Alex Forsyth of Forsyth Photography. I've got Jamie Brady around the corner doing a video for Welcome to Wimbledon. Now, Jamie goes extra on the research. So if you want to know all the ins and outs and all the other little nitty gritty bits, then go see Jamie's video. He's also done some drone footage, which I won't be doing. The miss messes with my drone, so I won't be doing that. But yeah, we'll wait for Alex and then we'll uh, go have a look at this bone crypt. Awesome. Hey, how you doing, Alex? Yeah, legend. How are we, my boy? All right. Brilliant. So, oh, is this Mumsy? Oh, finally get to meet you, my love. How are you? Yeah, how are you? Oh, finally. Oh, one of the Conquest family. Yeah. Oh, William the Conqueror. Brilliant. So, um, have you been here before? My father, Smith. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, my father was a Smith, so he was... He, he is actually from Rothwell. Oh, okay. All right. I'm all right, mate. Yeah, yeah. 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 all right. Well, awesome. So um, we're going to get acquainted and then we'll go in and we'll have a look about, eh? Yeah. Awesome. Look like a couple of gangsters. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are gangsters. <laughs> Happy days. Happy days. Oh, wow. You are, yeah. Fantastic. Brilliant. Well, there's party number one. What's this? So these are... Oh, mercy seats. So oh, it's to, to look like you're um, standing no, no. up. No, to, to be, so that you, you have your ne knees bent, but you're not standing. Um, I, I, was, I was always told they were for the rich people to look as if they were actually standing and not no, sitting. No, they're, they're designed so your knees are bent, so that your knees are bent in prayer. So you've heard of that saying, knees bent in prayer? Yeah, I, I like my theory. I like my theory. Um, so it's a theory, though, it, and it's yeah, completely wrong. But the, these here, they had them as little ledges, and you could pull the seat back, because, of course, they have to stand during prayer mm -hmm. and, and during everything else. Now, of course, the rich people didn't always want to do that, so they had these ones where they could perch and still look as if they were standing. So, yeah, that's my theory, and I like my theory. OK. Uh, Watch your head when you go around the corner. Oh, it's not wrong. It's not wrong. Yeah. Joining in with a lot of YouTubers, I'm afraid. Oh, oh God bless you. Oh, oh, wow. Do not touch the bones. Oh, yeah, that's low. Oh, oh. Jamie, you dropping bits? Oh, yeah. Yeah, mate. Wow. Um, I'll follow Jamie round. Wow. Right, the osteoarchaeologists state that there are about 10,000 bones here. Oh, they are from all parts of the human body, but you'll notice there appears to be a higher proportion of the larger bones, the skulls and femurs. However, this was because in 1910-1911 uh, times, they had a problem with water ingress through the two south-facing windows. Okay. So originally in the medieval period, uh, the earth would be set back, the ground level is approximately the top of the window arch, and you have natural light shining in on the angle. 
Anyway, they have a problem with water ingress. So what they did, they stacked the bones into one or two blocks in the middle, but then they reinterred, they reburied a lot of the smaller bones, hence the disparity in ratios. Uh, okay. But that disparity gave rise to a couple of erroneous theories. Now, in the medieval period, all of Western Europe, apart from southern Spain, was Roman Catholic, one religion. And uh, one erroneous theory uh, was that the Roman Catholic Church believed that you only required the skulls and femurs for the resurrection. That is an absolute load of dingoes' kidneys. <laughs> the Roman Catholic Church in the medieval period, as well as now, believes ideally at the resurrection you have the full bones in the body, but if you don't, God will provide. The other erroneous theory was that it, it was a Knights Templar heresy. They believed we only required the skulls of Venus for the resurrection. Again, an absolute load of tosh. Uh, and that one possibly came about because the Knights Templar battle flag was the Jolly or Boson, skull and crossbones. Now, there's also animal bones here, which is common with human osuries. This one is a cow bone with a sharp edge. There's a big beastie down here, which is a horse bone. Failing that dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> and the archaeologists say there's also apparently sheep and deer bones. Now, many so evil uh, graveyards, churchyards, were used for social festivities and also animal grazing the animal bones. Now, in the medieval period, Northamptonshire was a lot larger, it included the towns of Stamford, now in Lincolnshire, Huntingdon and Peterborough. Northampton was the largest town, Stonewalled. Stamford was the second largest town, Stonewalled. Rothwell was the third largest town in Northamptonshire. No evidence of stone walls, but there is one reference to an escape, so possibly some form of defence, possibly a wooden palisade. Now, Rockingham Forest, created in 1265, forest meaning King's hunting area, wouldn't all be wooded. For foraging, that's, that's right, it, King's foraging grounds. Uh, covered a third of the county of Northamptonshire. It went down as far south as Northampton, as far east as Thrapston, as far north as Market Harbour. And Rothwell and Kettering was slap bang in the middle of Rockingham Forest. And even in the 1290s, when they cut the forest back to a northern section and a southern section, uh, the southern section came down as far south as Rushton, little village two miles north of here. So even then, after half an hour, Three quarters of an hour walk, you can be in the King's Forest illegally poaching his deer. Now, purgatory was a Roman Catholic concept in the early 13th century. Some prelates believed in it, some didn't, and some, being canny politicians, were sitting on the fence. But in 1264, Pope Innocent IV decreed that if you were ascended into heaven, then first you went to purgatory. And then, dependent on how pious you were, and shock horror, how many masses you paid the church for for the repose of your soul, would cut your time down in purgatory until you'd finally ascend into heaven. So the more money you gave them, the less the chance you had of going to purgatory. purgatory, <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 yeah, but it'd be a short time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, of course, in this country, we have a change of religion in the 1530s. The Church of England, the Protestant Church, doesn't believe in purgatory. So, originally, every cathedral, every minster, every large church would have had one of these osuries. There are probably hundreds, if not thousands. Suddenly, they're obsolete. So, a lot of them, they reburied the bones. In this case, the ground was covered back to the side of the church door would be locked, it would be a forgotten door on the outside of a church, you wouldn't talk about it uh, because it would be a heresy of the previous religion, 
So within one or two generations, most people would have forgotten that this ossuary ever existed. Until, in about 1700, the sexton, the grave digger, fell in whilst he was digging a grave through one of the south-facing windows. Now, apocryphal roll rumour states he went mad, but he was a grave digger, for God's sake. So, I mean, he'd seen corpses in all states of decomposition. So, apart from falling into blackness, wondering how he's going to get out again, covered in all whatever, I suspect mentally it was okay. So, I'm assuming the bones at the time were not stacked like they are now. Ah, the original con configuration, four foot high, four foot wide, running along the south wall, the north wall, okay. and the east wall. And these, all of these bones were in those configurations, were they? They were all, they've been, they've been since moved into these. Two. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's, there, there was, uh, they were moved at one point, 1911, when they had the water problem. Okay. Uh, the, sh the shelving went in the 1920s, and these sort of crates, one of better word, went in the 1990s. Okay. So, so yeah, my, my, my pet theory is they're uh, out of work dry stone wallers saying, excuse me, Vicar, can I stack your bones, mate? Yeah, yeah. Because they are well stacked as well, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Now, various theories about the bones. I'll run through them all, even though I don't believe in a lot of them. Battlefield victims. This one's come about because the last major battle of the first English Civil War, it's at Naseby in 1645, is about eight miles west of here. However, <coughs> the archaeologists have only found one skull with pre-mortem trauma. Secondly, who on earth spends money on hiring men wagons and oxen to transport dead common soldiery from a battlefield, even though it's only eight miles away, it just doesn't happen. Uh, thirdly, mm, I've got number three, I remember it. Oh, oh yeah, they know where the burial pits are at Naseby. Okay. Hmm. And lastly, when the sexton fell in, the grave digger, in about 1700, it was 55 years after the battle, and they were known it was here, but yes. they didn't. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah. Second theory is plague victims. Now, medieval man, they have been a lot of things, but he wasn't stupid with the death wish. Mm -hmm. If archaeologists today are digging a burial site that they then later believe is a plague victim site, yeah. they have been known to wear full protective clothing. I'm assuming it depends on the strain of the bacillus, but it can still be active. And uh, So therefore they wouldn't put them in a place where someone could... Precisely. Re relight the... Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, in the medieval period, <coughs> uh, uh, Black Death might have been different, just purely because there were so many, but plagues happened all the time. Hmm. Uh, but uh, generally, they would have been buried on consecrated land, but it's likely to have been a plot furthest away and probably screened off with it, bushes or something, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, f I found Wellingborough's bubonic plague burial pit. It's, um, as you're going into Wellingborough, you've got the, the ladies, the statues. And just on the right-hand side, you've actually got Wellingborough's bubonic burial pit plague. No one had ever noticed that. It's surrounded by trees, lovely little green space. Yeah. No one knew about it. Yeah, so... Yeah, so, so, yeah it's right on the edge of town, yeah. Because of uh, Black Death, uh, I mean, they were just so... Uh, was it half the population was yeah. uh, taken out, wasn't it? So mm. uh, I imagine there wasn't space in the normal... Because many of all graveyards were relatively small. Mm. So that would have just been too much anyway for Yeah, them. yeah, absolutely. But, uh, another theory is monastic burials. Now, this church was owned by the Abbey of Sirencester from 1133 up until the Reformation in the 1530s. And the order there was an order of regular Augustinian canons. And they were colloquially known as the Black Canons. Start of a ten, why? Still with the Black Death? They wore black. Oh, right, okay. Their habit, habit was black. And they, the ab it was an abbot at Sirencester, and uh, the order did allow their canons to take up individual benefices. And if you have a look at the nominal role of the vicars, there are six vicars which have the prefix dom in front of the name, short for dominus, Latin for master. And 
uh, this order of canons use that prefix, so we can almost guarantee that those six vicars, or six priests, were black canons. Okay. Now, uh, the archaeologists say that there are two and a half thousand people's remains here. Now, 10,000 bones, two and a half thousand people's remains, those two figures seem a bit incompatible to me. Mm -hmm. Four bones. Yeah, four precisely. Bones. So one of them's going to be wrong, I should imagine. But anyway, that's the figures the archaeologists came up with, but you're not going to have two and a half thousand dead cannons. Though, wait for it, there may be the odd loose cannon. Yeah, you like that. Yeah. Another theory is routine clearance of graveyards. Now, there are post Reformation ossuaries, for instance, some brides in London, which were used for routine clearance. So every eight or nine years, they clear a section of graveyard, put the bones into the ossuary, shut the door, lock it, and then that's it for a further eight or nine years. Now, the University of Sheffield, they believe that these medieval ossuaries were used for much more than that. One reason being on that east wall, particularly on the right hand side, is evidence of medieval wall painting. A 19th century mm. antiquarian stated it was a doom painting, doomsday, the last judgment. Mm. And you're not going to put a relatively expensive painting on a wall if you're not expecting people to see it on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah. Now, Sheffield have got a nice analogy. They say perhaps you did your confession with the priest in the main body of the church, came down into the ossuary here, then you pray to your dead ancestors, and your friends and enemies' dead ancestors come to that, because you wouldn't know who was who. So you're helping to cut your own time in purgatory by being very pious. But at the same time, your peers could be walking outside the church on the south side, look down through the windows and say, Oh, Master Joseph, what a pious man. So you even took in a few boxes of kudos with the local community. Now, medieval man still believed the body was sentient after death, though it did gradually fade away in time. And in the book of Tobit, which is part of the Apocrypha, an additional book of the Old Testament, you've got the seven mercies listed, one of which is to look after the bones of the dead. Now, medieval graveyards, they only used to dig them down about two and a half, three foot, you wouldn't be buried in a coffin, you'd be buried in a shroud, linen, or possibly wool. Now after about, it depends on soil acidity, but after about 12 months, uh, uh, the, uh, after the flesh had been eaten, worn away, etc., the bones could be reverently dug up from the graveyard and placed into the ossuary here. Yeah, just losing my thread now. <laughs> uh, Never had so many cameras on the audience. No, no, no. <laughs> Very good, though, mate. Brilliant. Absolutely mega. Now, some of these skulls have a darker hue to them. Uh, now, we know that when the uh, Bishop of Norwich uh, was due for his osiery to be open in the 13th century, that he didn't appeal to all the parishes in the diocese for, connect, uh, for donations of bones. Because it's, it's no good having a pilgrimage tourist attraction if you've got bugger all in it, is yeah, it? Yeah, that's true. And the same may have happened here. They may be from outlying parishes where the soil conditions uh, were different. And this church is on the um, pilgrimage route from, um, from Peterborough uh, Santiago Abbey to Santiago. Yeah, to, thank you. Santiago de Compostela. My they boy. still run that route today. Yeah. Um, uh, they, they, they would likely have, they probably went to St James in Northampton or the forerunner of St James in Northampton as well because they tried to visit all the St James churches they could so they probably this town is likely to have been a stopping off point for pilgrims which would have made it very important then, as a town wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, it's it third largest yeah, exactly. anyway yeah. but yeah. It, it, on the pilgrimage route I mean that's, yeah. that would certainly make it so, so, so elevate it above a normal. Yeah. So you're yeah. protected. You've got a possibly a wooden palisade. Yeah. You've got the church here with the osiery. Uh, we know that two miles away at Glendon, little hamlet on the back road to Kettering, there was a chapel to St Helen, 
Or St. Helena. The, uh, the original cross. Yeah, yeah. yeah, precisely. And the nearest large church from the chapel to St. Helen is supposed to have a piece of the true cross. So we've definitely got the osiery. We've possibly got a piece of the true cross. Probably other less important relics as well. So it's highly likely that pilgrims came to the church and possibly came down here as well. Which would explain why this is so the way it is, because it's, it's inviting, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, I, I mean, like there was theory. probably a, a, a little altar at that end. Mm. They don't know for certain, but there may have been an aperture above here. There was obviously a chapel because you've got a double piscina on the wall of the church above here. So there was a chapel. So the, the priests may have seen down here and vice versa. You may yeah, have seen yeah. the priests doing mass. Pay homage. And is this where the painted, uh, the, the doom painting was on this wall, is it? Yeah, there's there's any evidence of that? Yeah, yeah, there's a little bit. Not bad. Well done, Jamie. There's some uh, red and black okra. Okay, yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Wow. Yeah. Obviously, in the 19th century, it was oh, far yeah. better condition. Yeah, of course it was, yeah, yeah. And uh, you can actually see the plasters come away, mm -hmm. hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. I can see you Sorry, trying to maintain some kind of air conditioning down here. Yeah, I think they were put in the 1990s. Right, that's the flow is gone. Now, the split, male, female, is about 50 50, which is what you'd expect. Yeah. Less evidence of children's bones, and that one was a child's femur. Okay, yeah. Now they see 14 carbon dated five skulls there on the shelf at 250 yeah, quid a pop. The three on the left tie in very nicely with uh, University of Sheffield's theories. The two skulls on the right were carbon dated because they were so unusual. They are not indicative of any of the other skulls in this osiery. And uh, Sheffield believed that they were either in a private collection or medical school and once they had no further use for them, they just found this a nice, easy depository to put them right, 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 instead of going okay. through a service of interment in the graveyard <laughs> and completing some yeah, paperwork. Yeah. 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 Mm. Right, okay. Yeah, because it, it's late 1700s. This has been open again. Yeah, yeah. Alex's camera. Okay, yeah. Beautiful. So that's interesting, isn't it, when you look at this one here. Well, mega right. Alex, well, well, it's like thank you, thank you, well, you absolute the star. The century, and the, so the way the guy's given over all the information on the history, that's mega as well. Oh, there's a load of bones down here I never noticed. So that his person was alive in the 1200s, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and he would have been maybe buried in the churchyard and then brought into the Australia. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't, you wouldn't put so a bit of darker history for you all, and it's only around the corner. This is George, it's James and Bob. And that's Raquel. That's crazy. It doesn't even come near this. And there's a load of there. Jamie, did you find out what they were, why they're in bags? Probably because they need some treatment or I don't know. Oh, just a bit of protection. I don't know for the... See, the thing is, you've got the moisture in the bag there, so maybe they need to be kept moist for it, I don't know. Vertebrae. Yeah, yeah. Slightly different. Well, yeah. Did you see the big. Um... Wow. Oh, I like it's that. Magma, it's a small magnet, surely. Is that what that is? It's for checking for vibration, surely. Isn't it? That's like a. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. But did you see the big beastie bow you were talking about? I have to go back down that one. Yeah, let's go for it. <laughs> Wrong with the video, uh, I'm on 21 as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but he's, he's done it all well. Yeah, no, the thing is, you've got to think about it. Oh, you're light, mate. <laughs> what did these people do? <laughs> you know, what did this? they do? What, what, yeah. Who were they working yeah, for? It, like, say, is it Bob? You know, is, <laughs> is it Tom? You know, yeah. Well, who went to go get the the grain down the road and bring it up for the other miller to use? You know, where did he go to have his drink at the end of the evening? Was he drinking honey mead or was he drinking yeah, something else? Yeah, was he drinking yeah. a wine? See, I don't know whether that person there, I don't know a great deal about these things, whether the teeth look like they might have gone before 
before that. Ah, okay. You can see there. You see 278 there with, with, with its teeth marks. Yeah, look. Look. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This place is awesome. Isn't it, it is, isn't it? It's like the big beastie style. Sorry, mate. Yeah, no, no, you're right. So this is a cow bone there, look. You said cow bone? This is a big one there. A massive, great big one there. Oh, yeah, wow. It's possibly a horse. Or oh, maybe even a horse. That's absolutely amazing. It's crazy, isn't it, when you actually look at this? Yeah, I mean, I saw the newspaper report, but... And I don't know enough about those to point out where no, they got it's deer, deer, deer and sheep. Yeah. The, the day, the, the, what we are like today with bones is very different, isn't it? Mm. You know, we don't treat them with reverence. Like, no. no, we just literally put them in a... Oh, we burn those people. You know, that's we do, the thing. Yeah. And, then, you know, this is actually a way of being able to... To, to, to show you respect, isn't it? You know, to put well, well Sheff Sheffield believed that many of the man and woman would have wanted their bones to be here, yep. would have wanted them to be seen, okay. and possibly would have wanted them to be touched as well. Right, OK. okay. It's common to yeah. touch saints, yeah. reliquaries. It's an interesting thing, isn't it? Because if, if that's the point, if you're still being touched, mm -hmm. you're still alive, essentially, aren't yeah. you? Yeah, Nowadays, you kind of say when, when you know, you're, you're alive until the last person says your name, aren't you? If you think about it, you know, that's, you know, until the memory of you dies, so then you die. That's, but um, this is really, really interesting stuff. It's a really good care of the dead, basically. They've got basically. one down in Kent as well, haven't they? There's, yeah, there's sort of six or seven left, aren't they? Uh, St Leonard's Hive in Kent. There's only too many evil ones that they know of. OK. Wow, I'm just going to have run out of... Uh, well, there probably are others which haven't been uh, mm. sort of refound. Well, I have to say... Thank you very much. Okay. Absolutely oh, well, brilliant. Where, where, yeah, where have yeah. you come down from? I've, I've come from Wellingborough. So, oh, um, um, yeah, I've, I've run a YouTube channel just on all, all our history in Northamptonshire. So um, I started showing off the bits of Wellingborough and like, the bubonic plague. And next thing you know, the whole channel's taken off. So. Well, I, did, I didn't no, do got... too many errors in that, do you? Because I've got a terrible thing. To, uh, uh... <laughs> no, 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 I'm terrible for uh, But we, we do it. And, and even as we talk, you know, I do erms and erms mm. anyway. So it's, it's I mean, just I don't get away with it like Bojo used. I like this guy. Yeah, yeah. 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 brilliant. I, I, I love it. There we go. Rough well cribbed. You've seen it. And so have I. Absolutely amazing. So thank you to Mick for that. That was absolutely amazing. And thank you to Alex Forsyth. And of course his mum, Kathy. Lovely to meet you finally. So yeah, I'm going to get out of it. I hope you enjoy the video. And we'll see you all again for the next episode of Purple Vision.